uh, the chairperson of the Africana Studies Department at Tennessee State University, and of course, Dr. Aladid, before we had our short commercial break, we were talking about uh, the racial uh, configurations, I guess, in uh, Brazil. But let's uh, allow you to uh, continue that discussion to not only talk about uh, South America, but to uh, bring in some information relative to North America and make the, com the comparisons and et cetera that you'd like to make. Yeah, one thing I think is very important, if you study the last days of Malcolm X, mm -hmm. especially when he formed this organization called the Organization of Afro-American Unity, mm -hmm. he came up with the concept of Afro-American. Now, when we think of Afro-American, we think of Africans, of uh, people of African descent inside of America. Mm -hmm. But when Malcolm spoke of African-Americans, he was talking about brothers in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and South America, that whole idea of Afro mm -hmm. being people, anyone of Af okay. African descent mm -hmm. in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And so the, the thing that we have to recognize here inside of the United States, that we have Africans from all parts of the world. Yeah. We have Africans in this country from Jamaica, from mm -hmm. Trinidad, from Nigeria, from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And w this configuration inside of America almost is a microcosm uh, okay. of the African world. Mm -hmm. So we have a microcosm of the African continent mm -hmm. and we also have a microcosm of the African world. Mm -hmm. And one of the big problems that we struggle with in the field of Africana studies mm -hmm. is to get people of African descent talking to each other mm -hmm. in spite of who they were colonized by. Mm -hmm. A lot of times because our brothers are from the uh, Spanish-speaking part mm -hmm. of the world, they might be Puerto Ricans or they might uh, be of some other group mm -hmm. that speaks Spanish uh, or from, from Mexico or Panama, mm -hmm. then we don't tend to identify them because we see them as being different. From, see uh -huh. them more being as Spanish mm -hmm. than they are uh, of African. Mm -hmm. And they play into the same kind of concept mm -hmm. and so that strategy that the colonizers use of divide and rule uh -huh. still is in effect because mm -hmm. now we're divided by languages mm -hmm. and that's one of the main reason we put a strong emphasis on our majors mm -hmm. learning uh, a European language other than English mm -hmm. so that when we go to places such as Martinique where they speak uh, French mm -hmm. our students can communicate or mm -hmm. we go to Senegal they can communicate beyond the, the barrier of the English language. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important for us inside of America who are of African descent mm -hmm. to start having more authentic dialogue and interaction with mm -hmm. each other. Now one of the things that we're doing at Tennessee State University mm -hmm. is that we have um, created a new organization called the African Student Association. Mm -hmm. And when the brother came to me to form that organization, at first he wanted to form an organization that would represent continental Africans. Mm -hmm. But I told him, I said, mm -hmm. Africa is where Africans are. Okay. Uh -huh. So he expanded the concept. Whole concept. Okay. The whole concept. So now this organization comprises mm -hmm. students from the African continent, from mm -hmm. the Caribbean, from mm -hmm. South America. So if you are a black man, as Peter mm -hmm. Tarr mm -hmm. said, you're an African. Uh -huh. Regardless and of how you might describe yourself. How you might uh -huh. describe yourself, mm -hmm. regardless of the fact that you don't speak Kiswahili or Yoruba mm -hmm. or Hausa, the fact is that you genetically and historically and mm -hmm. even culturally, we're mm -hmm. still just as African as we ever were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, mm -hmm. let, let's look at uh, the introduction of the African into uh, North America here, because I think you've given us quite a bit of information about uh, his relationship uh, in South America. But what about North America? And sort of look at that and give us some kind of comparison uh, between uh, the uh, two areas. Why is it that we don't seem to recognize as Africans in North America those Africans in South America? One thing that I think is important to realize is that a lot of times when we think about Afro-American history or African-American history, the first thing we start with Jamestown, Virginia, 1619. Yeah, okay. And we fail to realize that the slaves didn't, in the beginning, didn't come directly from West Africa to Jamestown, Virginia. Mm -hmm that many of them were taken to the Caribbeans mm -hmm. where they underwent what, they, what the slave masters called seasoning, yeah. mm -hmm. where they were broken in, mm -hmm. uh, where they were beaten unmercifully mm -hmm. to the extent that they stopped speaking their African language, they stopped speaking mm -hmm. their, they stopped practicing their various African religions. And then after the slave masters felt that they had been domesticated mm -hmm. or seasoned, mm -hmm. then they were brought to mm -hmm. North America yeah, and put mm -hmm. inside of 13 colonies. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that that, that whole middle passage mm -hmm. coming from the Guinea coast, from West Africa, then going to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and then we were broken in there mm -hmm. and then brought to mm -hmm. uh, the east coast of, mm -hmm. of the United States. So that is the connection through the mm -hmm. middle passage. Mm -hmm. We were Caribbeans before we were African Americans. Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so there's more of a relationship between Africa and uh, 
South America and the Caribbeans and then into uh, the North American continent rather than directly from, the, from Africa uh, to the North American continent. It was very mm -hmm. late in the slave mm -hmm. trade when slaves would start coming Come directly, directly from West mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. They always went to the Caribbean mm -hmm. and then they were brought inside mm -hmm. of the United mm -hmm. States. But it was at that point they had been just humiliated mm -hmm. and degraded to the point mm -hmm. that they were just uh, many of them would just didn't have the, the will to rebel mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. the slave system. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, there were those that did not work on the plantation mm -hmm. in Jamaica. They, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. ran into the mountains. These would call mm -hmm. them maroons. Mm -hmm. These are people that deserve. In fact, you find the same phenomenon took place in Suriname, mm -hmm. which was a Dutch colony. Mm -hmm. It was colonized by the Dutch. They went into the mm -hmm. mountains and set up their own uh, community. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one of our graduates, um, Levi Watkins Jr., yes. actually went into the Suriname to study mm -hmm. an African community there. And that community is an exact replica mm -hmm. of a, a comparable community in Africa mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and of course, all of these are, uh, might be what you call Africana survivals, and yes. the survivals uh, dealing with this period. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think, uh, Dr. Allen D., uh, one of the uh, things that uh, many people fail to realize is that while we talk about uh, the Africans in North America and South America, many of us fail to really grasp the uh, economic importance of uh, the slave trade. Let's talk about it from that, uh, that perspective. I mean, uh, uh, how profitable was it uh, to when you dealt with slaves and, 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 and what part did slavery play in the overall economy of uh, those particular areas? Well, first of all, we have to realize that the transatlantic slave trade set the stage for capitalism in this country. It set the stage for the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. It's what uh, is called the stage of primitive accumulation. Mm -hmm. And in that process, there was a, a system that they created called the triangular trade, mm -hmm. where, where ships, people invested in slave ships. Mm -hmm. it, it, there was a stock market in mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, they could go to a that there's a, a city, a street rather, in England called Derby Street, mm -hmm. which is like Wall Street in the United States. Mm -hmm. And people could invest in a slave cargo. Then the slave traders would go to West Africa, get the slaves, take them to the Caribbean, force them to work on the mm -hmm. plantation where they would produce sugar cane. The sugar cane was then mm -hmm. sold and made into rum, mm -hmm. and that rum was taken back to Europe mm -hmm. and sold so that the profits came in. Mm -hmm. In many instances, mm -hmm. uh, the slave venture was 200, 300 percent profits. Mm -hmm. So there was an enormous amount of money made on the slave trade and, because uh, and it was an me, investment. And let me interrupt you here, uh, Dr. Uh, Aladid, and to uh, uh, take the second commercial break after which we'll come back and we'll deal with uh, some of the other aspects of this. Uh, let us have this second commercial break and we'll be. Of the Department of